Hi, and welcome back to Coco Sleep. I hope you're enjoying this podcast of original children's bedtime stories and meditations designed to make bedtime a dream. Just talking to your adult for one second. If this podcast helps your little one to sleep, please find the time to leave us a short review. It will help our stories reach more people and we'll be so grateful that you did. Tonight, I'm going to read you a warm-hearted story that's all about the power of friendship and teamwork. Let's hear how bunny rabbits Bertie and Bobby hop to the rescue and go on an adventure to find the moon and put it back into the night sky. Snuggle down, relax and close your eyes. Breathe in and out. Nice and deeply. In and out. In and out. And now it's time for Luna's Lost Moon by Alicia Ainsley. It was a cool summer's day in mid-July when Bertie and Bobby hopped on down to the lake at the edge of the forest, never expecting what adventure was in store for them that day. The sun was high in the sky, smiling down on all the citizens of the forest below. And Bertie, the grey-haired rabbit, wanted to run and play hopping giddily through the forest, over flowers, under hanging branches and through lush green bushes, he eventually came upon a warren tunnelling deep underground. Peeping his little head into the hole, he called out, Bobby! Bobby! Come out and play! After a few moments, he heard the sound of rustling and he saw his friend's furry face peep out from the warren. Hello, Bertie. What a beautiful day it is. The sun is so beautiful today, it seems as though it will never end. Then let's get out and make the most of it, Bertie exclaimed, turning on his heels and hopping off. Bobby shuffled his way out of the warren, head to fluffy tail, and followed Bertie as he hopped off through the forest. The pair ran with such speed and uncontained glee with their floppy ears billowing behind them in the wind. The birds chirped overhead, cheering them on as they raced the neighbouring bunnies to the lake. Eventually, Bertie and Bobby made it to the edge of the lake where they took a moment to drink and freshen up. The lake was busy today with the woodland creatures all sunbathing along the banks. It seemed like everyone was wanting to make the most of the glorious sun today. The lake looked dazzling as the sun's rays reflected off the surface of the water, creating an iridescent glow of sparkling light. The fish of the lake appeared to be delighted by all the attention of their large audience today and were performing quite the show. On a normal day, the fish lazily swam around the lake, rarely emerging from under the surface except to say hello on occasion to a sunbathing frog. But on this occasion, the fish were pulling out all the stops to entertain the crowds of animals that had gathered around their home. Bertie and Bobby giggled as they watched the fish fly through the air, swapping places with one another and creating formations in the air, all perfectly synchronised like a choreographed dance. I always knew the fish were secret show-offs. Bobby whispered to Bertie, and they laughed fondly. 
The colourful fish were performing remarkably well today. However, Bertie's favourite of the fish in the lake were the silver fish that came out at night. Under the blanket of night, in the moon's beams, when everyone else had gone to bed, the silver fish would propel themselves out of the water and perform the most unbelievable cartwheels, somersaults and turns in the air before landing gracefully back in the water, barely leaving a ripple behind. During the day, they remained below the surface of the lake, resting and preparing for the goddess Luna to bring out the moon to its rightful place in the sky, when they would finally emerge and take their place on centre stage. Often, Bertie would sneak away on a night from his cosy family warren to come and lie by the side of the lake and watch the silverfish perform their spectacular show in the spotlight created by the moon's beams. He liked to think that the silverfish put on this show specially for the goddess Luna to thank her for all the moon did for the world and the peace and tranquility that it brought. Bobby looked around the sides of the lake for a spot for them to lay, but there didn't seem to be a prime spot anywhere. It's too busy here, Bobby sighed, looking round for a spot to relax. Let's head over to the reeds and see if we can find somewhere to rest there. The fluffy duo hopped off around the backs of the resting deer, the bathing otters and the napping herons in search of the reeded area, hoping they could find a spot to relax around there. Where the reeds stood, it was sheltered from the brightness of the sun and there was a soothing, cool breeze rushing through the reeds, swaying them gently from side to side. It was much better here. Bertie and Bobby slinked effortlessly through the tall, grassy plants until they came upon the bank of the lake. There was a perfect patch of sand, ready and waiting for them. It was totally undisturbed, with no one else around, and it was the ideal bunny-sized area for them both to lie down and stretch out long, all the whilst dipping their toes in the calming, cool waters of the lake. Bertie and Bobby sat themselves down in their secret spot, and sighed with relief. What a glorious day it was. They lay there, resting their eyes, hearing nothing but the gentle rustling of the reeds rocking in the wind, the distant chirping of crickets, the occasional bird song from the nearby trees, and the soft ebbing and flowing of the water on the shore. After a while, Bobby's ears began to gently twitch as they picked up on a new noise breaking through the lull of soothing sounds around them. It was an unusual sound, one that he hadn't heard before. Rolling over, Bobby gently nudged Bertie to gain his attention. Bertie, did you hear that? he whispered. Bertie yawned a great yawn and stretched his little body out. He had happily dozed off and was not too pleased to have been disturbed by his friend so soon. What are you talking about? Bertie asked begrudgingly. Bobby paused and listened closer. 
A strange sound was coming from through the reeds to their left. Holding his paw to his lips, he hushed Bertie and beckoned for him to follow silently. The two bunnies crept through the reeds, following the strange sound. Eventually, they came to a new part of the lake that was completely shaded by large, overhanging trees. It was so covered that you could be forgiven for thinking that night had fallen on just this area of the lake. The waters were completely still here, with not a flying fish to be found, and on the edge of the waters sat a woman. The woman had bright white, long hair that cascaded over her shoulders and down her back to the floor. She wore a long, sparkling silver dress and a silky shawl that was held on by dazzling diamond beads that spiralled up and down her arms, all the way to her fingertips. She was very beautiful, but there was something wrong. Her purple eyes glistened with longing, and her brow was furrowed with concern. Bobby tilted his head to the side. What do you think is the matter with her? He said to Bertie. Well, how am I supposed to know? Bertie replied, ever the practical one of the pair. Let's go ask her. And with that, Bertie pushed his way out of the reeds where they hid and hopped over to the side of the mysterious woman. Bobby followed behind, curiously. The ethereal woman turned her head to the tiny bunnies by her side, forlornly. Hello, miss, Bertie said softly. My name is Bertie, and this is my friend Bobby. We couldn't help but notice you seemed troubled. Is there any way we can help you? The woman smiled at them kindly. Oh, bless you, she replied with a husky, deep voice. I don't think you can help me, sweet bunnies. I have lost something very important, and I have searched with all my might but I just can't find it. Bobby crept closer to the woman and suggested sweetly, Well, maybe we can help you look? We are quite good at finding things, especially if they've fallen underground. The woman laughed gently. <laughs> I don't think that what I've lost can be found underground. You see, my name is Luna. I am the goddess of the moon. And I have lost the most important thing to me. The moon itself. Bertie and Bobby gasped. <gasps> How could this have happened? Bertie cried. He couldn't believe. He was in the presence of the great goddess Luna herself. Luna began to explain her predicament. She and her brother Helios, the sun god, had quarrelled the day prior. Helios had claimed that there was no need for light in the night. He believed that the creatures of the earth should sleep and wait all night long for his return in the morning, when he would ride his great chariot across the sky, bringing light to the world. He was very jealous of the attention that Luna was receiving from the humans. 
they had begun worshipping her every full moon, and Helios was concerned that she was attempting to take his place as a great god amongst the humans. In his jealousy, Helios had stolen the moon from its place in the sky and hidden it away so that Luna could not find it and bring light to the world tonight when he would be away. Bertie and Bobby felt terribly sorry for the goddess. The earth needed the moon on a night. Otherwise, how would they find their way in the dark? Bertie and Bobby promised to help the goddess find the moon and return it to its rightful place in the night sky with her. But where would they begin to look? Luna said that she had searched everywhere she possibly could. Unfortunately, Luna could not walk around on Earth anywhere in the direct sun, otherwise Helios would see her and stop her in her tracks. So she was resigned to searching in all the shaded and covered areas for the moon. Bertie and Bobby were determined to help the goddess, so they set out on their own search, vowing to not stop until they had found the moon again. The eager pair were very excited to help out a goddess. The other animals would never believe them, but at least they knew it to be true. Bertie and Bobby retraced their steps around the side of the lake, but couldn't spot the moon amongst the crowds. They called over one of the colourful fish of the lake and asked if a moon had, by chance, been dropped under the water, but the fish had seen nothing. They knew that Luna would have checked the depths of the forest as it was shaded for the most part, but she hadn't found the moon lurking amongst the trees or hidden in one of the bushes. So the bouncy duo decided to gather reinforcements to aid them on their quest. They reached out to a family of woodpeckers and asked them to help them in their search. If Bertie and Bobby could cover the land and the woodpeckers cover the sky, then between them, Surely they could track down the missing moon. As the woodpeckers soared off into the sky, Bertie and Bobby hopped out to the nearby fields, searching amongst the poppies and the lavender plants. Bobby darted in and out of the poppies, calling out for the moon as he went but he couldn't find anything. Once he had given up on the prospect of the poppy field, he raced to join Bertie, who had headed off to search the lavender fields. Bertie was still lethargic from his delightful nap by the side of the lake, and the lavender fields were not helping. As he ran through the pretty purple plants searching for the moon, he found himself yawning more and more as he went. The scent of lavender was so comforting and he felt all of his troubles and cares melting away as his running gradually became slower and slower. The power of the lavender plants overcoming him. He tried to resist at first, but the sweet surrender of sleep was calling him. 
and it was such a peaceful feeling that he couldn't help but give in. Bertie was soon fast asleep amongst the lavender, purring gently with every breath, having the sweetest of dreams. Bobby, on the other hand, had been lucky in the poppy fields and had remained true to his mission. As he approached the lavender field where Bertie had gone, he took a deep breath in and recognised the mesmerising, beckoning, sweet scent of the sleep-inducing plants. He knew that if he went into that field, it was unlikely he would emerge again until he had enjoyed a long, deep sleep amongst the plants. By the time he would awaken, night would have already come, and he would have failed the goddess Luna. Bobby decided to abandon the search of the lavender field, and asked a friendly field mouse to stand watch over the lavender field, so that when Bertie eventually emerged, he would know to meet Bobby back at the lake. Bobby raced off back towards the forest with no time to lose. Taking a break, Bobby leaned against a large tree trunk and thought hard. He had searched the lake. He had searched the fields. Luna had checked all of the dark spots of the forest. Where could the moon be hiding? The god Helios was clever to have hidden the moon from Luna so well. He knew that she would be limited in where she could search, because if he saw her out in the bright open areas, uncovered by the trees, then he would spot her and stop her immediately. And that's when Bobby suddenly had an idea of where the moon could be. Deep in the centre of the forest, there was a clearing where the trees parted and a large waterfall stood proud. There were the most beautiful flowers and plants that you couldn't find anywhere else in the forest. They thrived in the sunlight. If Helios wanted to hide the moon somewhere that Luna couldn't easily get to without him seeing her, this would be the perfect place. He would spot her as soon as she set foot in the clearing. Bobby raced off deep into the forest, convinced that he had figured out where the moon was hidden. He ran gracefully over the dirt tracks, dodging trees and fallen branches, leaping over brooks and ignoring the greeting calls of fellow forest creatures. He was on a mission. He was soon joined in his race by the family of woodpeckers they had enlisted for help. As they flew above him, keeping up speed, the mother woodpecker called out, We have seen the moon, Bobby. It is in the great clearing of the forest. Bobby grinned with pride. I know, that's where I'm heading right now. Together, Bobby and the woodpeckers journeyed through the forest until they came upon the entrance to the clearing. 
Bobby had never been to the clearing before, but had only heard of it. It was just as glorious as his mother had once described. The grass was greener than any Bobby had seen. It glistened like emeralds in the sunlight. Beds of flowers of all colours bloomed fully, sharing their gorgeous floral scents with the world. Bobby had never smelt anything so delightful. As he breathed it all in, all the fresh scents of the forest, He closed his eyes and basked in the tranquility of this moment. There were barely any sounds to be heard except the singing of the birds overhead and the trickling of the waterfall. The great waterfall stood proudly with its blue waters gushing over and down the side of the mountain of rocks. The water gathered at the bottom, creating a breathtaking plunge pool that an array of birds were bathing in. A small, bright, multicoloured rainbow curved its way from the falling water to the centre of the pool, and at the bottom of the rainbow lay the moon. It bobbed in the water, discarded by the jealous god Helios. Bobby was delighted and started to approach the moon, but when he got to the side of the plunge pool, He realised something. The moon was in the middle of the water and Bobby could not swim. What was he going to do? As Bobby looked around him for someone to help, he noticed a small rowing boat berthed to the side of the waterfall. His prayers had been answered. Bobby hopped on over to the boat. Inside it, there were two wooden paddles and a pile of thick rope. It was perfect. Bobby used his head to nudge the boat closer to the water, ready to jump inside when he heard a little voice cry out from behind, Wait for me! Bobby turned around to see Bertie emerge from the forest and enter the lights of the clearing. He was so relieved to see his friend He didn't want to go on this adventure without him. Bertie met Bobby at the boat and proclaimed, I had the most lovely dreams in the lavender field, and when I woke, I knew exactly where to find the moon, and it brought me here, to you. Bobby giggled and ordered his friend to jump inside the boat. Once they were both inside, they took a paddle each and rowed their way over to the moon. The moon was far too heavy to pull into their boat, so they decided to make the most of what they had. They pulled up close to the moon and wrapped the thick rope around it, creating a lasso of sorts. They then tied the end of the rope to the back of the boat 
and began rowing back to shore. They noticed that the sun was growing dimmer in the sky as they rowed, and the day would soon abruptly come to an end. They didn't have enough time to get the moon back to Luna for nightfall, and they weren't sure how they would move the moon once they got it to land. They were only small forest bunnies, after all. Pulling up to land again, Bertie and Bobby pulled the rope holding the moon and brought it to shore. They were so tired from all of the running and rowing of the day. They weren't sure they had the energy to get back to Luna by the side of the lake to let her know they had found the moon. Just as they had almost given up hope of fulfilling their mission in time, the father from the woodpecker family flew out of the forest and landed by their side. Following behind was Luna, the goddess of the moon. While the rest of the woodpecker family had found Bobby, the father had informed Luna and brought her to the clearing too. Luna was ecstatic to see that Bertie and Bobby had found the moon for her. She called out to them from the shade of the forest, Please bring the moon to me here. If I step out into the clearing, then Helios will see me. Bertie and Bobby looked at one another, worry creeping across their faces. How would they be able to pull the moon across the ground to the forest on their own. But before they could ask, the woodpecker family huddled together and grabbed the rope with their claws. Bertie and Bobby took the end of the rope and, working as a team, The group of tiny animals pulled and dragged the moon from the water all the way across the lush green ground to Luna, hidden beneath the trees. She leapt forward and embraced the moon as if it were an old friend. As she held it, a half-moon crescent began to glow on her forehead. She had been reunited with her purpose and her power source. Thank you so much, all of you, she said gratefully. Now I must hurry. Night is almost upon us, and I need to put the moon back in time. Luna leant forward and placed a gentle kiss on the forehead of Bertie and Bobby and stroked the backs of the family of woodpeckers. Then... She wrapped her arms around the moon, closed her eyes, and as the crescent on her forehead began to glow, she disappeared magically.
in a haze of silver light. Bertie and Bobby were so happy that they had been able to help the goddess Luna. And as night fell and the sun disappeared in the sky, they watched with pride as the full moon shone brightly in its rightful place. Bertie and Bobby decided not to return home that night. Instead, they made themselves a bed by the side of the waterfall with a night sky as their blanket. Stars twinkled overhead and the moon watched over them, no doubt alongside the goddess Luna. They were exhausted from the adventures of the day, and they curled up close to each other for warmth. As Bertie rolled over to his side, he gazed out at the plunge pool. Miraculously, as if they knew, a shoal of silver fish began to gracefully leap out of the water, dancing and twirling in mid-air, before plunging back into the water as if they had never been there at all. Bertie liked to think that this was the goddess Luna's way of saying thank you one last time. As the silver fish danced in the moonlight, Bertie watched them until his eyes grew heavier and heavier and he could no longer watch as he fell into a much-deserved slumber. <laughs>